Insignificant Others is a, it's a follow-up to my first movie, which was called Among Brothers. And Insignificant Others, it's about a, a group of characters that are all tied to the same murder investigation. The film's about relationships and how their relationships are intertwined and how manipulation affects those relationships. On the surface, Insignificant Others is it's a murder mystery but it's also a film that takes a look at how people's lives are interconnected. The way different lives intersect, I think. A soldier that returns from Iraq to his, to his wife that hasn't seen him in two years, to two brothers that are competing with some sibling rivalry, to a boss and subordinate, to two sisters, one of whom is addicted to drugs and has a, has a problem, and how that affects their relationship and what it does to them. It looks at how the daily stresses of life, the, the things that we go through on a daily basis, motivate us to do the things that we actually do. Greg, our little girl is sick, and I can't even take her to the doctor because we can't afford it. I'll figure it out, okay? I started writing the film when I was uh, editing my first film, Among Brothers. Uh, I had one of those sort of writing pinches where I was out one night in Charlotte, and I was walking home, and I got home that night and sat down and wrote about 30 pages and created all the characters and the context for the film and the setup for the film, and had a pretty good sense of what the film was. And then over the next two years, you know, on and off, I would touch it, I would pull it up, and I'd take a look at it, and I would explore different ideas, but it really was a it was a long time between when I first wrote that initial idea and the genesis of the whole story until we had something that was shootable. In the casting process I found you know the eight to ten actors that I really wanted to work with and I reworked some of the roles to make those characters you know those actors work in those roles and for those characters and by doing so um, really allowed the actors to be able to explore those 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 roles and run with them a little bit. It gave us an opportunity to really work things out and be spontaneous, um, and 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 make the story you know that much more realistic and human. I think. For me, I play a lot of moms. I play a lot of you know friendly people, and I sort I'm sort of the go-to girl for pain. You know, I'm the crying mom and all of that. So for me, this was something that I was extremely interested in. And when I read the script, I, I felt like this was going to be a different thing. So for me as an actor, it gave me a chance to, to play the kind of role that I don't always get to play. So you're Christina. Come on in. The film shoot was kind of a shoot of 30s, if you will. It was, you know, th about 30 speaking parts, about th almost 30 locations, about 30 people in the crew. So it was kind of this this rule of 30s, and and being able to do that in about 30 days as well, just under 30 days, was very hard to do. It was just a lot of stuff to fit into a schedule that you know went on for you know just about five weeks or so. We had two and three locations in a day. I don't. I think only once or twice did we ever shoot just one location in a day. I think we were either shooting, you know, the, um, you know, neighborhood streets to, you know, to Greg's apartment to outside the complex, you know, from the WFA studios to um, TikTok Cafe. Bruce's house and Christina's house were actually on the same street. Jack's apartment, just around the corner from that, I think we were trying to shoot five or six pages a day. Uh, something like that, which is pretty aggressive. Getting all that really required a lot of planning and a lot of diligent work on the front end, weeks and weeks and weeks of prep to make sure that when we got there on the day, we could just knock down and execute what we needed to do on that day and not have to, you know, not have to go back and revisit what our plan was. We had a very clear plan going into it. And that's the key, I think, to making a small film with no money is it's all about planning. It's all about prep. It's all about preparation and planning. And then on the day, you're just executing what you already planned. We shot for what, for five weeks, and by the time we were done, you know, even though we were there easily, uh, 12 to 14 hours a day, in some cases longer, um, you didn't really want to see it end. I had a guy talking to me like a week and a half ago wearing nothing but a t-shirt. First of all, who gets dressed t-shirt first? I'm serious, who gets t-shirt first? What are you, three? I think one way to for, for aspiring filmmakers to really get the right crew and the right, you know, the right cast together, especially the right crew, is to go to people that, you know, have experience, whether they've assisted or PA'd or something like that, and, you know, sort of pooling those people together and moving them up the ladder a little bit. Someone that's normally an assistant, you move them to a key department head, you know, if they're capable of doing that. And that's the way I think you go about crewing up a small movie. There are a few people who have the drive, I think, that John has. I mean, he is 
He eats and drinks this stuff all the time. This is what he does. I think a lot of directing is also casting and how you cast roles. And it's not, no, walk into the scene this way. It's more like casting the right person that you know is going to give you a variety of options. The biggest compliment that I can give to John Schwartz is that out of any director that I've ever worked with you know, on film, he is the absolutely most open director to input, feedback, suggestions, changes. It was a very safe set in terms of us being able to uh, to take risks and to say, you know, let's let's try this here. And, and John is not he's not precious with his with his script. And a lot of the scenes, he would just let us play back and forth. I've worked with many directors before who who don't get involved uh, with your character or really even the story. They're they're more concerned. They're almost DPs. They're more concerned with the placement of a light than they are your uh, your 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 character, your, what you're doing in the scene. He had his eye on the prize. He knew how the entire movie was going to come together, which enabled me to give my best work to him. I have a lot of respect for actors. They do something that's very hard to do. They make themselves very vulnerable, and that's not easy to do. Um, I really enjoy the rehearsal process and getting on the same page with them about what the, what the character is and who that character is and how they're going to execute that character and give you some um, flexibility in post-production when you're going to need to make things work that you didn't realize you needed to work until you got into post-production. Uh, so I really like the intimacy of the relationship a director has with the actors the most out of anything, I think, in, in working on a film and directing. The best thing about, to me, about making independent films is, you know, having that, you know, you've got a great crew, you know, some of them young, some of them more experienced than others, but everybody, it just, you know, they've kind of got the urge to get it done, you know what I mean? So everybody wants to work hard and they're kind of involved with this whole project and, you know, once you get a group together and everybody is on the same track, then it just makes, you know, the process that much, much more uh, exciting and fun and vigorous. When the opportunity comes along and you've got a director that's willing to uh, take a chance or to invest in the people that are working locally, um, you know, that speaks volumes about him. I like to think of it as a nice cross-section of our society and like who we are, as, you know, as a culture, as, you know, from, from the stand-up comedian world and the artists of the world all the way through soldiers and people that, you know, struggle coming back from, from war and sort of the, the, the representation of everyone, if you will, and now sort of how everyone's connected. And I'd go back and do it again right now i do it again right now. It was really, really tremendous experience. Mm -hmm.